Hey everyone, Wanabot here and welcome to Pathfinder Gallowspire Survivor's Early Access, out now on Steam. I'm going to be... Oh, let's be the wizard again. It looks like my progress was reset. I played the demo for this. Oh, no, 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 no. My progress was not reset. I did get to keep all of my better progression and stuff. Yes! Oh, that's such a nice feeling, especially for these games. I usually start over if there's a plot, but if there's no plot, then eh, whatever. Oh, uh, let's see. So do... I did like the wizard, or did I like the fighter? I don't remember. Let's go for the wizard, let's bring the fighter, and let's just see how this goes. So, if you have not seen this game before, it is a uh, it is an interesting fusion between the Pathfinder intellectual property. You're most welcome here. Come to me. Uh, between the uh, Pathfinder IP and Bullet Heaven game design. So I'm kind of curious to see how this is going to go, uh, because I gave a a decent chunk of feedback the last time and I'm already seeing some like major improvements it feels like a companion companion character uh plays better but I uh let's see oh what are we going to do ooh lucky chance to find chest yes right that was that was the thing you do you could go for exp but uh the more you kill the more enemies you fight the uh I guess you've got diminishing returns, you know, every level uh, comes slower and slower than the last. So it's almost more practical for me to go like way out of my way to just rush treasure chests and open as many of these as I can. Let's see if the RNG is any friendlier. It might remain slightly punishing. We will see. Oh, speaking of slightly punishing, this is a lot of enemies. Uh, but it does feel like my companion character is actually a lot more helpful. Okay, so I get four attack slots and four passive slots. Uh, see, it doesn't really matter if I'm picking rarities. Rarities is is just like how many levels it gets. So it's better for me to grab the things that I want rather than the things that I don't want. Uh, so in this case, I think I'm actually going to go for fleet. We need damage. Fireball might not be a bad idea. But the faster I am, the faster we can get to those treasure chests. We have some level of like a slow regen so I can get my HP back. Plus, there's potions and some other stuff that'll get me where I need to go. But I'm mostly trying to open as many of these chests as I possibly can. Okay, so we get better chance of finding chests, gold coins, and a little bit more movement speed. Not much, but whatever. It does, does feel like they dramatically increase the amount of enemies that I have to deal with. Okay. Ooh, Ice Storm Purple. Pocket of Hail, Ice at Random Location. Slow, the problem is cooldown is kind of long, slow duration. Nah, I'm gonna get it anyway. There's the health potion. Yeah, that Ice Storm's decent, especially if we can get that AoE to be bigger. Now that's a yes. Pick a potion. And Flame Vortex. Fiery Vortex forms next to the caster before moving away in an erratic pattern. Sure. Oh, do we get two levels? Uh, sure. Let's work on that Flame Vortex. I'm liking some of these spells. They seem kind of neat. Oh, so it's a Flame Tornado. I was thinking of more of like a Fire Aura. But that's that was just all in my head. Nag that. Then a magnetism po Oh no, this is even better. Alright. A storm. Essence extraction. Chance of getting extra essences. Boy, they were just giving a lot more rare stuff. Duration. Oh, freeze time. Duration to 4.3 seconds and reduces cooldowns while active. I don't know. This is neat. I think I'm going to go for Howling Blizzard. Alright, come on, give me a good roll. Nah, I wanted that blue movement speed bonus. Whatever. I'll take the treasure chest bonus. The higher chances of finding those, the better for me. Because again, they give a lot of uh a lot of reasonably good upgrades. So what do we want? Skills damage, range, size, slow duration. Reduces cooldown. 
And the problem is the cooldown reduction is pretty minor across the board here. I think I'm going to go for the Howling Blizzard. Or not the Howling Blizzard, the Flame Vortex. Just because that has, I think, the highest chances of hitting the most number of enemies. And we want to capitalize on that as much as possible. Okay. So, have a healing potion active for 79 seconds, kill 60 elites, and clear 5 floors. Ah! No way, I'm getting a 20 on this one. I don't know what that would have been. Oh well. Right, where's our next chest? I... I do actually really like the running from one chest to the next. Uh, let's see, health? No. I'll f go for the boost on that one. But, uh, ah, pick up radius. There we go. Yeah, having these little objectives to race for all the time feels really good to me. Uh, I find a lot of bullet heavens have this serious issue of... Ooh, I think, if anything, I should probably go for the chest drop rate. Because if the enemies are also dropping chests for me, that's going to increase my scalability even more aggressively. I will be teleported in 28 seconds. You'll never catch me. I will find this tre- Okay, this treasure chest is really far away. That's fine. <laughs> um, but a lot of bullet heavens, you're just in a field doing not much of anything. Wait, time stop? Oh, it doesn't actually stop the timer. It's fine. At least the timer stopped while I'm interacting with chess. That feels good. Alright, next one. Down here, it's probably too far away. We don't have like a dash or a rush or a teleport. Yeah. That's okay. Looks like we're gonna get this quest done pretty quick. I think I'm just gonna leave the quest log hidden though. Uh, no sense cluttering my UI for something that's Ultimately, I don't have a whole lot of agency over. But yeah, this way I'm always moving towards something. I'm not just fighting the horde of enemies that are constantly coming at me. I am specifically saying like, okay, I want to go here. It's on that 17 for a hot second. So more essence, more movement speed, and more treasure chests. I'm like giving myself that small goal uh, makes a fairly big difference as far as I'm concerned. It's just otherwise I'm, I don't know. I feel kind of listless when I play a lot of these games otherwise, because it's just like, I need, I need just that one waypoint saying, go here, go here forehead. Uh, just, just so I can do something else. Uh, rather than maximizing kills, because that's fine. It's enjoyable enough. Hey, 19. Doesn't give me the boot, but it gets me everything else. And some of these upgrades are actually pretty good. Five damage on the Ice Storm is solid, especially if you can drop that on the boss. I'll have to try this, the, uh, the fighter again. And see if he's got, ooh, it's these guys. All right. Toughness for extra HP? Nah, I'm gonna keep working on the... I'm just upgrading my moves. Oh, it's... it's a full-on mid-boss. Wait, hold up. Yes! Burn! I usually don't kill this guy. And it looks like he dropped a really fancy chest. Uh, no, I'm going to keep working on that Howling Blizzard. Every single one of those damage upgrades is pretty major. <laughs> oh, that sucks. It's fine. Yeah, we're on the 19 for like a hot second, and I was like, oh, maybe. No, of course not. Okay. 7% increased chance of finding chests. I mean, yeah. Right, where's our next chest? Over here. 
I'm just gonna keep blitzing it. Yeah, I'll have to try this guy. Uh, see if I can go for, like, big ol' sword swings. Just get her HP back. I need to go back to my previous footage of this game. The game feel feels better. Like, the enemies feel more numerous in a way that I actually have to kind of worry about them a little bit more. And the companion actually feels like he's doing something. I still wish I could upgrade him just a little bit. Ah! Oh. Oh, come on! We had that- we had that 20. We had it just for a moment. Uh... I'm just gonna keep, keep working on Flame Vortex. Yeah, you see that gold upgrade and you're like, ooh, you know, maybe? And then it's just like, of course not. I mean, credit to them. They're doing a good job of, uh... Bringing back that feel uh, from the tabletop RPGs, which is, oh, you know, hey, I really desperately need to roll, like, better than a 12 uh, to take out the boss. Rolls, nat 1, you die. Every team wipe, everybody's sad now. Uh, let's see. I don't know. I, I've been sincerely craving playing tabletop RPGs lately. I was... the. I was honestly planning on recording a, a session, you know, just like kind of a one-on-one -on -one thing with Shell, just as kind of like a, well, I want to play TTRPGs, but uh, getting other people, well, there's the Nat 20, the, not exactly the best haul, but I'll take it. Um, but the older you get, the harder it is to organize like a tabletop RPG session. Uh, the people you're playing with are either too busy or schedules don't match or time zones. Somebody gets sick, people have kids, you know, all of that jazz. Okay. And so it's it's been increasingly difficult for me to do uh, Pathfinder recently. I guess it's not Path Pathfinder. Uh, I specifically want to play Starfinder. I, growing up playing uh, tabletop RPGs since I was much, much younger. Uh, God, when I start playing... When I was eight? Seven or eight or something like that. Um, but I've been adventuring around fantasy worlds for like the majority of my life. And so for me, I want to go to sci-fi places or like otherworldly areas. Things that aren't necessarily as, uh, I want to say as supported by standard tabletop RPGs, but, uh, so specifically for me, yeah, it's Starfinder's the, um, the system that I really want to, uh, play with, especially because they've got the second edition coming kind of soon, uh, and I want to play an amount of Starfinder 1.0 before 2.0 comes out and renders some of my books, I'm not going to say ineffective, but, uh, I, I, I don't know how many of you have opinions on Pathfinder. But I really liked Pathfinder 1, uh, back when, it, like, the original release of Pathfinder when it came out, because it was just like, hey, Dungeons & Dragons has decided to do, like, some weird thing with 4th edition. Make it feel like a, uh, make it feel like a video game, which, like, has merits, but, like, eh, it wasn't really for me. Pathfinder was like, yeah, we're just gonna take everything that worked out of 3.5 and turn it into, like, our own system and spin it out from there and have like really nice artwork uh, and so I was like super into that because I always felt like Dungeons and Dragons had kind of hit and miss art because uh, I think they pulled for more people Pathfinder was like I want to say a little bit more specifically curated at least early on I'll have to go through my books a little bit but there was like a very specific art style uh, that I specifically I think um, appreciate uh, and so I was, like, very much the target audience for Pathfinder. And then they came out with 2.0, and it was just like, oh, yeah, this actually does fix a lot of my complaints uh, about Pathfinder. And I'm curious to see what they do using their system, like, how they improve Starfinder. And then also uh, all the companion books. I'm a sucker for, like, I don't want to say, like, augmented or augmenting my game, but just, like, uh, one of my Pathfinder books makes it like more sting steampunky and so i really want to do like a wild wild west campaign at some point and from like a sci-fi perspective i feel like you could do all sorts of stuff 
I'm just gonna go for the extra HP. Considering we have so many potions, I might as well. And this way it stops giving me alternatives. I was hoping for the natural regen, but these potions are so generous that it seems kind of silly to. Okay, extra movement speed, yeah. Boy, there's a lot of enemies. There is a mid-boss in this mix. It's my next chest. The problem is, even fighting the mid-boss is maybe not the most doable. No, never mind. All I have to do is just get the guy stuck. Alright. Wow, three chests. Maybe fighting is a little bit more practical, especially now that we've increased our, our chest drop rate dramatically. Alright, next one. I'll take an 18. There's our third. What is this one? Oh, it's the Ice Storm upgrade. Well, I... <laughs> I think we are going to roll the boss when we finally run into him. And yeah, I'm just going to pick up whatever my rarest options are. Considering I've I've filled out my entire lineup. I guess since we don't have any more elites, I should probably just beeline for the treasure chests again. I forget. Uh, just go for the most rare options. Because my entire build is filled out at this point. There's no reason for me to, um... There's no reason for me to be picky. Because uh, at this point, I'm locked in. Everything is an upgrade, so I generally should go for the biggest upgrade I possibly can. Even if, uh, it... I guess that would pre pre eh, prevent me from making, like, one or two items particularly good. Uh, so, like, my arcane missiles, if I could make those... Better. But meh. Hey. Not the best rarities, but I'll take it. Because I think we're going into a boss fight. If we're not, we're close. And I think this time I'm going to win. Erodin, patron god of humankind, was the last living member of the ancient people known as the Aslanti. Huh. I've never actually looked into the lore. I see so much of myself in you, young one. Alas, you are destined to taste the familiar agony of defeat by my hand. But I shall grant you the kindness of a swift exit. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm still slightly sick. Uh, and so, trying to do that specific voice, maybe not the best idea. Okay. Yeah, it seems like keeping my distance is probably the way to go. Because even if he does the charge, it's he doesn't change direction. And it seems like, since he's the only target on the field, all of my attacks are going to aim for him regardless. Yeah, so I'm just I'm just gonna ring around the uh the dude man. He'll catch me eventually, or he won't. He can try. But I am a wizard with some scoot. My poor knight uh, companion, on the other hand, is not going to be able to do too much here. He's just going to hang out. Maybe he gets a swing in every once in a while. I guess once the ad phase starts, then he'll get he'll get some more time in the sun. I'm curious about the ice storm. I'll have to check to see if it's actually doing damage here. Ah, well struck, little one. But you stand with but one companion. Will I have a legion to my side? I still kind of wish uh, you could find more party members in the dungeon. 
and they just follow you around. But these guys are actually kind of tough. I can't, I can't just completely ignore them. Hopefully they give me some potions. I guess we did get, did get a level up. Holy smokes, there's so many. Oh, there's so many. Okay. I thought we would roll the boss, and we were, but then these guys showed up and were numerous. And slightly painful. Okay. More essences. Because I think that's just more EXP. Ow. say it's fine, but now we're on to the next phase, which is the ad phase, but the boss is doing a thing. So I'm going to have to dodge numerous foes. Okay, so what do we got? Health increased, movement speed. I think I'm going to just go for the health increase at this point. It sounds like he's saying, round one, Lokdar, ow. Ow? I think we've still got him. I'm gonna leave that healing potion. I can have to watch out for those. The lightning actually has kind of like a pre-hit effect uh, that does do damage to me, so I can't just yeah, no, that actually does just hit me before the lightning hits. I don't know how to feel about that. Like, I'm I'm pretty positive about the changes. I don't like the fact that the lightning can hit you before it's actually, like, out. Because it'll show up, like, right before I pass through an area. Or, like, right as I'm moving through an area. Uh, and it doesn't give me time to, like, avoid it. So it's kind of guaranteed damage. Not too much. I'm like, if it was, like, a fraction of the damage, like, a couple of points. But, boy, get out of there before the actual lightning hits, because that hurts even harder. And who knows? Maybe that's in exactly the case. I haven't gotten hit by the lightning proper yet. Uh, nor do I necessarily care to. I would also say I wish the fighter was a little bit better at uh, specifically avoiding them, too. Like, he would, if he would rotate just a little bit to sidestep them because there he was just like ah nope you want to move this direction I'm going to uh you know I'm, I'm just gonna sidestep uh to follow your trajectory or whatever his plan is I guess one way to do it would actually be to have the uh fighter locked to my cursor so I could kind of aim which direction he's pointed in and so I could use him to uh I could use it to like dodge and avoid I'd Freaking crack did 30 damage to me. And I'm pretty sure we don't have any healing potions yet. Now, nah. That hurt. 30 damage is a lot when you don't have much HP, but we did pretty well. Got a lot of gold and a lot of EXP, so let's see what we got. So, even more gold in the EXP, some more gold in the EXP. Potion, any potion active for 240 seconds, that's easy enough. Clear seven floors. Sure. Huh. We now have an alternate skin. Or did we always have that alternate skin? I think, I think we just always did. I don't know, I don't remember. Uh, let's see. We also have attributes. So what do we want to invest in? So, strength increases damage of weapons, dexterity is projectile speed, health is health and re uh, constitution is health and regen, intelligence is damage of spells, wisdom reduces cooldowns, and charisma, base ranges, and size of areas. Class level 1 at plus 5, 5 at 10, 20 at 40. Like, a little bit of constitution isn't the worst idea. Yeah, 
Yeah, let's give him a bit of con. Okay. And do we have some talent points? We have two. So unfortunately, leveling up Prodigy costs more tokens. Okay, we have to be level two before we can actually get any of those. So I think... I think I'm just going to ignore them for the time being. Oh. That's interesting. Let's see, he doesn't have anything else. Put all... A lot into wisdom. Oh, can we, um... Right, we can upgrade these. It pulls little essences in the room. Increase loot radius for a little while. Essence drop chance by 10%. Double essence drop chance. I got 10,000. Let's see, so that heals 1% per, half a percent per. I'm not sure how much of these I want to invest into anything. Or how much I want to invest into any of these. Okay, so upgrading the energy breath potion. You know what? I'm going to do that. At least a couple of times. It seems worth it. There. Okay. Uh, let's see. So do we want to do a different run with the fighter this time around? Let's do fighter rogue. Let's go for like heavy melee. Let's just see what happens. I feel so slow right off the bat. And the one problem is the first boss, you don't really want to be close to him. Oh. Or do we want to do, like, Rogue Wizard? Well, that's kind of one of the most convenient chests ever. It's just like, hey, upgrade your sword a bunch? Yup. Cool. Yeah, the one problem is... This character doesn't have much for range. I was wrong. Sure. We'll just give this guy a silly amount of uh, range attacks, I suppose. Okay, there's our next chest. Because who knows? Maybe this guy's actually pretty good. Pierces enemies in front of the character. Increased duration. Oh, that's his um, eh, armor. Or a higher chance of finding potions. Stuff like energy breath. Obviously, the healing potions are great. But we have way more HP than the, the wizard did. might actually be really helpful. Uh, hammer, lobs a hammer at a random enemy within within range. Interesting. I'm still going to go for the chakram. It bounces between enemies. It seems to have perfect accuracy-ish. There we go. Yeah, the reason why I want to invest in... Energy Breath Potion is increasing its damage, but then giving a lot more duration. Seems like a genuinely good idea. Because I can use... Uh, I mean, if we're lucky, we could potentially chain it so we're just always breathing fire. I don't know if it... If there are enough upgrade levels for it, but... I still see it as a possibility. And yeah, my broadsword, it's not scaling that fast, 
but it'll get there. Oh, regenerate. Ooh. Supplies one. Potions. I'm going to go for the fast recovery. And then passive-wise, I think the last one we want to get is the... Let's see, spike ball spin around the character for a short duration. I could try it. Could be good against groups. Yeah, let's let's get these spike balls. I don't necessarily know if it's the best. But yeah, the the last passive I want to get is the one that increases treasure chant uh tre treasure chest drop rates. Because that for sure helped us last time. Or at least it feel felt like it did. Boy, it kept going over that 20. But you know, the more the more it shows you the 20, the more likely you're never gonna get the 20. So reduces the duration, or reduces the cooldown, increases the damage, increases the range. Ooh. Flail scaling might not be that great. We'll see. It might just need a little bit more uh couple more upgrades to like really shine. But you never know. Oh good, pick up. Uh, let's see. Lucky. There we go. There's our last passive. And now we can get whatever we want. Uh, let's see. Is that a second chest? Yep. Two chests. And this is why luck is good. Dang, our dice luck is weirdly high today at least on this run previous guide maybe not so much so yeah i might i might actually have a a shot here at taking on the boss uh let's see flail eh. i think i'm gonna focus other things like it's nice it's just not amazing I was just assuming that the the wizard would be yeah. the wizard would be the only guy uh, that has a shot. There it is. Yeah, like I've I have mentioned and probably will mention in the next couple of videos. I'm still slightly sick, and so I might have like an occasional cough or something. Trying to get over it as fast as possible, but I mean, I don't know. Some things just don't want to go away. All right, let's see. Well, that's the easiest treasure chest ever. And it seems like the potion quest should be pretty quick to complete. Ah. Kept seeing that 18 go by, and it's like, oh, maybe. Oh, maybe. No. Worth a shot. A shot, a hope, and a dream. At least at least these uh at least these chests are like pretty much everywhere. I still kinda wish they were like specialized rooms. Like if it was laid out a little bit more like a dungeon. Uh and so some of the rooms were like a little bit more tricksy trapsy. And uh, made me work for the chest just a little bit. Oh, you know what? One problem with the fire breath potion. I almost don't want to kill enemies. Like, I only want to be killing enemies around the treasure chest. Otherwise, I'm actually extending the amount, or I'm reducing the amount of time that I'm on this level. <clears throat> thought about that. Because we leave this floor when I've killed 500. Okay, where's the mid bot? There he is. Let's go lucky. But I almost... 
kind of want to just wail on this guy. See if I can beat him into oblivion. Because I know he drops a good chest. I almost kind of wish that the, the mid-bosses, like this guy especially, would drop like a... Um, like equipment. Like things that don't fit here that are big bonuses. I guess the rarity is good. As long as I don't roll a nat one. Hey, that's pretty good. Whoa. That's a really good chakram upgrade. Just flat 12 damage. And yeah, hopefully we'll get another um Another magnetism, but there it is. I was like, just stumbling over the word for a hot second. Let's go for the treasure chest. I want to go for the regen, because uh, I know I'm going to need it, but... Getting, um... The more chests I have, the more regen I'm going to get, just baseline anyway. There we go. Purple upgrade on the sword. The damage is good. I'm not going to go get that treasure chest down to the south. It's not going to let me. It doesn't want me to. Well, I mean, you know what? Free chest forever. That's not the greatest. Here we go. What level was the boss on? Was it the third floor or is it the fifth floor? I don't remember. And unfortunately, this whole time survived thing doesn't really stick in my head because it, I don't think that counts like half of the time. Ooh, big, yeah, big flail upgrade. Might as well. What I'd like to have, and it's unlikely, is I'd love to have the flail have a 100% uptime. That pretty much never happens, and it's pretty much guaranteed to not happen, because I'd have to get so many upgrades for it. But, uh, boy, just having an uh, infinitely rotating defensive shield of death, that always feels good. Let's probably go for the bow. Because we're going to need that on the boss, and it's feeling not that good right now. That's a magnetism potion. Not convinced. That's the best. Oh, do the elites always drop a chest? They probably do. Maybe. It's to the 20. It's fine. Oh, is this the group of three mid bosses? Because I think this guy's one as well. Yep. Yeah, so this happened last time where we got um, like three chests in quick succession. I thought I was just super lucky, but the answer is no. Just a common spawn of three elites simultaneously. Okay, uh, let's go for the regen. Did I invest in movement speed? Sure hope I did. Because I could have very possibly just not picked it up and just keep thinking I have it. I don't remember if there's a way for me to check. No, I do have Fleet, fleet Foot. It's just only 15%. I'm not even going to try. Not enough time. Alright, boss fight or another level? After returning as a Lich... Our Buffon began a 500 year conquest of Avistan. Now, one more level, at least. Okay. Where's my. Oh, there's my chest. Hiding on the other side of my portrait.
took me a little bit to, I guess, process where it was. I was just like looking around, checking the rest of the UI. Let's hide the quest log. Once again, we don't need to see that. Uh, let's see. And nothing. Yeah, the, the UI is pretty clean. And honestly, one of the nicer looking like Bullet Heaven UIs I've seen. Uh, just in terms of framework and, and just organization. Obviously, it ain't saying much. But it is one of those where it's just like, yeah, actually, good UI design does kind of matter for these games. I think it's because a lot of Bullet Heavens tend to be kind of amateurish. Uh, usually made as like a developer's first game. And so you don't get quite as much production value with a lot of them. I'm still curious what would happen if you had like a really, really big budget one. But uh, I, I don't know. I almost kind of feel like it would be a diminishing return situation where you'd very quickly just be like, eh, probably better to turn this into another game. Because you can only pack so much in. Maybe. Yeah, we've got so much healing, I don't think I need to care too much about health. Oh, wow. Yeah, that, um... That passive regen actually makes a big difference. We're probably still gonna get cooked by the boss, but you never know. Interesting. I think there was another chest to the south of us. So I almost wonder if it's just generating like a lot of these all over. Simultaneously in case you actually feel like wandering. Uh, I'm gonna keep going for the chests. I feel kind of tacky for just eating all of these hits, but... I don't think it matters. Because all we have to do is find, like, one health potion and we're back up to full for a while. And so it puts me in this kind of weird mental state where I'm just like, face tank, I suppose? And then we're just going to get wrecked by the boss because you can't face tank him and there aren't enough potion drops. Well, who knows? We might actually get lucky with our potion drops uh, with that upgrade. Also, I know this is going to sound weird. Ground texture actually looks really nice. I'm Dirt floors and stone floors are hard to make look good. Uh, or they are hard to make well. They are hard to render in such a way that they look good. There we go. Sorry. Phrasing is hard. Ooh, that's a big upgrade for the Bastard Sword. Um, and, like, as far as, like, a, a very repeated texture on the ground, the rock floor looks nice. I, this mostly comes from the perspective of somebody who has tried for years to make tileable ground textures look good without spending oodles of time on it uh, for my campaigns. Like, I... I tried really hard to make this um, this fairly uh, complex repeating tile texture uh, for a couple of my campaigns, uh, Dragon's Deep specifically, and like to get a, a good stone floor going or cave floor going so it looked like it was natural and or or organic. Like I'm actually having my players go through a you know equal parts either ancient runes or an uh, extensive cave system. And it was way more work than it was worth uh, at the time, and I probably won't ever do it again. Part of the reason why I want to do Starfinder is because I can have clinical and clean, just blank white floors with some cool lines going through it, and that's it. Um, but I will forever respect anybody that does a good ground texture. Because, boy, I can't. I want to. So the one big issue here is this guy is like actively my uh, actively just going to mess me up. Big couple of issues. The rogue is following me. 
which means it's that much harder to dodge the charge. I can't get close to him because he's effectively... Uh, I can't get close to him because all of his attacks are kind of centrally focused. And more or less, I'm just setting my rogue up for death. I guess we could actually just accept my rogue is going to die. Especially because I think we can just revive the rogue. All right. Rip rogue. Time for me to win. It doesn't seem like there's a downside. Yeah, they can just they can just take a break. Cause yeah, they don't they don't benefit from my like bonus regen or anything like that. And so Ow. Gotta be kind of careful about some of these things. There we go. Oh wow, this is much. It's a very different experience. I guess it makes sense. This guy has a very like clearly directed local attack. I probably should have not picked up those those potions in retrospect. Uh, but he's got a, like a very clean attack th that is easily directed towards a group of enemies and does a ton of damage. Uh, my wizard just had a bunch of just like, eh, fires at a random enemy. Good luck. What I'm saying is I think my wizard was drunk. Um, whereas like here we've just gone all in on this sword and it's working. Oh, let's go for the movement speed. There we go. Avoid a couple of those. We've still got a lot of red health potions. Stay away from the cracks. I couldn't actually tell if I was hitting him or not. I think I am hitting him. Yeah, I am actually getting him. Yeah, so it's a little bit more of a hit and run fight here. But if I can get him with a sword, it messes him up. Like, a lot. Well, this is a bad place to be. Fine. You cannot hurt me in a way that is truly meaningful. I just have to chill and avoid damage for a while and I'll be back up to full health. I say that, but then take damage. Yeah, I'm not going to try and fight him for a moment. Ow. Uh oh. Yeah, sure, we'll grab a we'll grab a health potion. I didn't know you could bait him into hitting a wall. I'm not going to be able to kill him quick, but I am going to be able to kill him, unless that happens. Slightly rude. Oops. I'm going to get hit by that. I'm being a little risky because I'm so close to winning, but I'm also so close to dying. Uh 
Uh. Okay, this should get him close enough. There it goes. Ooh, death was... Yep. I'll go for the extra re regen. Death was your only escape for what awaits you. I mean, I suppose. I'm just glad I beat the boss for once. Hey, I mean, we almost got the legendary, but I'll I'll take this. Even more damage on the bastard sword. Freaking 213 damage. That's pretty good. Wish I could intentionally scale the AoE a bit bigger. Give myself the range. Also, the bow. Not nearly as good as I thought it was going to be. It actually does just shoot randomly. Ooh, new, new tile set. Yeah, I guess I should just go for the, um, I should just go for the chests. I do wish getting the boss to ram the wall was a bigger bonus. Mostly from the perspective of, uh, if I did not have such a overpowered broadsword, uh, we would have had a really bad time there. And it feels like going for a melee character, it kind of feels like shooting myself in the foot for fighting the boss. Uh, as the boss is particularly dangerous to anything close by. And I'd love to see some means of making it so the melee characters can get some serious hits in. Like um, a stun period where they take extra damage in melee. Or something. Ouch. The fleet. Nah, more of the bastard sword. Here's a question on the options. Can I skip the you found a rare thing animation? The answer seems to be a current no. I would love to be able to actually skip that. Either by, like, uh, clicking or just, like, turning it off in the settings. It's fun the first couple of times. You know, it's just like, oh, cool. It's like a rare upgrade. And now at this point, I'm so desensitized to it because it's not even that big of an upgrade for me anymore. Especially for blues. Like, maybe a purple. Definitely a gold. Blues, maybe not so much, though. It could also be one of those that it's, like, uh, the length of the animation scales based on how cool the upgrade is. They're just shelling me. Where's my potion? Or not potion, my treasure chest. There we go. Unfortunately, I don't think my voice is going to hold up. Uh, uh, no, I think I can. I think I can make it to the end of the run, but I might be a little sloppy. We're, we're just going to charge for every treasure chest, whether or not it actually is wise. I guess I'll go for the mid-bosses. Because I don't know if I'm going to survive the run. I I was not banking on survival. Then again, I'm not, I'm not even actually trying to die here. I'm not going to avoid these treasure chests. But uh, it does seem like the enemies might be able to just burn me to death. Just like my poor rogue. Go for that extra regen. E. Could have rolled that 20 at a different time, but it's fine. I'll take it. There's the next chest. I think we're fine. I think we can do it. At least we can clear this level. And probably the level after. Let's see. Yeah, what else is there to say? I think a lot of my original feedback uh, that I gave for the demo version of this still kind of stands. I'd love to see a little bit more like nitty gritty Pathfinder level customization and stuff. Uh, and maybe some equipment. I like the passives uh, between the... or I like the passives that you want... 
or unlock the the upgrades that you're getting just per level. Um, but I wish there was a little bit more like bonus things. Uh, cause the one problem is my, my build right now is crystallized. It is done. There's not too much more that I can do with it apart from just scale the numbers up. And admittedly scaling the numbers up has actually gotten kind of impressive. My, my broadsword does, or my bastard sword does hilarious amounts of damage. And like, if this keeps up, I will be swinging so obscenely fast. Nothing will be able to stand in front of me. Um, but it does, uh, we do lose out on some of that, like, really fun, roguelike hey, you found a cool power-up, uh, that changes how your, your game works. Um, uh, mostly boil, boiling down to the fact that, you know, I have all, all of my upgrades, all, all eight of them, all four weapons, all four passives, and just scaling numbers up isn't particularly exciting, uh, just in terms of, like, my build, my build doesn't change just because my bastard sword has gained an additional six damage. It's not like it can favor it more or less, and it's not like it does anything more than previously, except for the fact that it hits a bit harder and uh, swings a bit faster. And so, uh, I don't know the frequency at which these would ever drop, but some more like kind of passive trinkety equipmenty things that you find over the course of a run uh, that are probably lost on death. You know, you get the Holy Avenger, it's really good against undead, but maybe, well, no, actually, it'd be good against undead and demons, probably. Um, I don't know, maybe you find instead of a bastard sword, you find a great sword, you lose your ability to block, uh, but your range goes up a little bit. It keeps the stats, but uh, it's like a slight variation to my my weapon. Or if I want to go for more of a, uh, more of a block, it's like, oh, do you want, like, shield spikes? I still actually think shield spikes would be kind of nice. Uh, oh, I'm fighting this this lad. He is chunky. And chunky, dang. He's gonna take a while to get through. Um, but yeah, just little bits every once in a while. Little decisions midway through the run. Especially after the first boss. That make me kind of rethink or... Uh... Maybe not rethink my build so much as just, like, it makes it feel like there's been an evolution. There we go. And, like, ways you could do it is obviously have these kind of mid-bosses with these uh, rare chests. Especially instead of, you know, giving you the option of, or dangling the carrot of just like, oh man, look at all these cool things that you could have gotten if you rolled better. Uh, if it was actually just a, like a, uh, a choice between like a couple of really cool uh, minor choices. But because the mid, mid bossy, you know, kind of level enemies are so tough, uh, it's not even guaranteed you're going to be able to fight and beat them on certain levels because they're actually just really ch chunky and it's going to take maybe too long to kill them all. But like you do it and all of a sudden your broadsword, uh, you get like the option of upgrading your bow or your broadsword or something like that to do something cool beyond. Or it could just be based on like X number of uh, upgrades for each weapon. So like, you know, say this puts my bow at kind of an internal level 20. Oh, that's the point where you get to choose between do you want piercing arrows or bouncing arrows? Uh, or fire arrows. And you could even have those be like unlocks or some other things. Just so there's that like baseline expectation that there's something cool I'm going to get on vaguely level 6 or 7 that's going to change my run dramatically. Something to look forward to on, on the lower levels. Because, you know, most likely you just haven't unlocked, or you just haven't gotten far enough to, to unlock and, and gain whatever that reward is. And then you can even throw, like, an absolute curveball. You know, have it show up every once in a while on the first level. Oh, you know, first level, your, your broadsword is now just a throwing weapon. What? And so you have to think, like, oh, yeah, maybe I should build around this in some way, shape, or form. It's probably a lot of extra work, and feel free to disregard at your leisure. That will always remain the rule for me. I actually had somebody mad about me 
uh, in the Steam forums just a little bit because I, I had been giving feedback and they were saying that I don't know what I'm talking about and I should be disregarded completely. And like some part of me laughed at that because it's just like, I'm not even being mean here. I'm just like saying, hey, here's like an unending deluge of random ideas that could be freely used or completely ignored. Ah, oh. and that I often put myself in a position of being an expert, but I'm not, you know, I've only ever made a couple of games and they never went to market. They're all just like game jam stuff, which I'd like to actually get back to. Uh, but considering programming's not my forte, I think I'm just going to go full in on like the physical board game side of things because you don't need to program those you just need to write the rules but that still will pale in comparison to like implementing these mechanics into a uh into like an actual digital game and all all of the extra effort required like i sometimes think about uh, getting into consultancy just a little bit in terms of oh, next chest is up north uh, in terms of like hey you know I can give a lot of advice on like game feel and uh, standing out on steam and like a bunch of other stuff um, especially for more like crowded genre games like bullet heavens roguelikes in general uh, but there's always kind of that like baseline imposter syndrome of you know even if i were to offer this service would it actually be valuable uh or would i actually just be dooming a bunch of uh prospective developers and then charging them for the privilege of it and so i i oscillate between like do i actually want to go through with this or would this be a uh a terrible presumptive thing and I don't know, it's just always in the back of my mind. So right now I just uh, throw it into the video on that I'm doing anyway. And just hope it's helpful. Wow, that is a huge upgrade for the shock room. 25 extra damage. It's still... Oh, wait, no, it did actually increase the number of projectile. Uh, the amount of bounces it's done. It started at 5, and now it's up to 7 with that last upgrade. I'm still convinced that those, like, um, epic upgrades or, like, every upgrade is just kind of an EXP or, like, a level count. So, like, a legendary upgrade is five or ten levels or something like that. Where a common upgrade is, um, a common upgrade is only, like, one. Hence why a common upgrade can increase the amount of projectile counts, whereas a legendary might not. And then, I want to say vice versa. Oh, the time survived resets on a per floor basis. Oh, that's weird. I kind of wish that there was actually a secondary timer. So I could see my like time survived per level and then time survived per run. It's not that weird. Uh, I was just wondering why it was so inaccurate. Because there's no, no way this run has been going for a minute 47 seconds. I couldn't believe how confused I was by that. Oh, we made it reasonably far, though. We might actually complete our kill 60 elites and clear 7 floors. Hopefully we'll get this guy up to level uh, level 2 at the very least. Perhaps if this is a D&D &D campaign, this guy'd be like level 10 already. Or dead. He'd just be dead. There's no way you could fit a uh, long rest into this mix. Like all of his, all of his kind of burst abilities would be gone. Action, action surge, uh, second winds. Like those would have been gone ages ago. Now he's just fuddling on, based entirely on. Um, oh wait, no, I'm getting things mixed up. I haven't played Fighter in Pathfinder. I don't actually remember. What, <laughs> I don't remember what uh, fighter mechanics are. Huh. Actually, it seems to be kind of random. It's not an internal level system. It just rolls the dice on what it gives you. Maybe? Or maybe not. Because it's got a projectile count of 10. The arrow's okay.
All right, let's clear this next floor and then I think I'm gonna have to call it. Maybe, I don't know. It's like, I don't want to stop, but I don't know when I'm going to die. We've pretty much successfully put ourselves in a position of near immortality. I'll just keep upgrading the bow for the time being. I want I want the uh, next boss to do me uh, do me in, but I'm not entirely sure if I'm gonna get to that point. It's a it's always a weird uh, push and pull on roguelikes, especially like Bullet Heavens, where I know if I die, I'm gonna get like a ton of stuff that I can use to upgrade myself. Um, and so. Like, I very specifically want to... I should I should finish these two quests first. Because that's going to be the biggest major upgrades. Oh, and we're very far away from these chests here. Um, but yeah, what? how would I describe it? Games where dying is actually good for you. It's... The logic behind it is weird. Because it's just like, do I keep going on the run or is it better for me to quit? and get a new slate of quests so I can complete those instead. I'd have to do some tests on that one. I don't know if I'm going to be able to kill 15 elites that quickly. Oh, boss fight. Mighty warrior, stay forever. He comes bearing steel against the crying kings. Cause such foolishness. Menicus, punish him. Melt his armor, melt his weapons, heat the metal, scald the flesh. One at a time or all at once, you'll find my metal stronger than your spells. Arrogance, the struggle brings us joy. And yeah, the other problem is uh, my voice is not built to be recording for like super long here. Um, and so I was just like, oh yeah, we'll just do another run. How long can I get? Oh yeah, I'm super dead. I mean, I might be able to kill Medicus, but freaking that fire shot hurts. I mean, I guess I can power it a little bit more. No. They hurt. Yeah, because even just, oh, no, oh, gosh. Yeah, I'm just being slowed by proximity. I guess I can have the, uh, I can have the thief tank the shots for me. <laughs> oh, that's bad. I, well, it's not bad. I just feel bad. Yeah, I, th I think we can actually clear this. I mean, we'll see what happens when all three of them show up. Enough games, we must return to our tasks. Menetus and Kos, join me in destroying this intruder. All right, now it's all three of them. So either I'm going to get absolutely wrecked here or not. My thing is, I think I can use the thief. Uh-oh. I can use the thief to eat hits for me. Oh, they reset in HP. No, I'm I'm post. I'm not even phoning this in. That's good. I don't want to phone it in, but I also uh I also want to stop so I can upgrade this guy. There we go. Flashy fools. There we go. Cause yeah, a lot of EXP, even more from these, including whatever this token is. Uh any potion active? Nah, it's Oh. I guess I'll go for that. I was hoping to get another one of these. There we go. I think it's actually best to re-roll so we get these tokens. This one's a little rough. But considering these tokens are the biggest uh, parts of meta progression for me, it seems like it's most valuable for me to... Uh, it's most valuable for me to just accrue as many tokens as I possibly can. And anyway, let's just put all of our points into wisdom because that reduces our uh, base cooldowns. Hopefully that's worth it. And we have three tokens. So what do we invest in? Uh, nope. Shield block is really good. Health gain from stamina. It's pretty good. Martial weapon attacks have a 20% chance to finish the cooldown of another weapon. Martial cooldown. Right, that's pretty good. Upgrade a martial weapon. 10% chance of getting the next upgrade rarity instead. Oh, yeah, that's really good. I always have 50% of your armor value. 
I'm just going to grab a couple of these. And we can always refund later and get big upgrades. For now, though, I think this is a good enough stopping point for me. We got way farther, farther than I meant to. Like, I honestly thought I'd get to the first boss a couple times and die. But no, nope, we rolled him the second time around with some effort. With some effort. Uh, but it definitely feels better. The core gameplay has been tightened up. I still feel like I need a little bit more uh, customization, both mid-run and out of run. Uh, gear and equipment is an easy example. Uh, increasing the party. Uh, could also be interesting, like, if you if you got the very rare upgrade uh, mid-run and out-of-run, so you could upgrade the wizard or the rogue if they're your companion characters or whatever. Um, I don't know. I, I, think, I think I've said my piece on, like, various ways things could be changed to give it even more, like, variance. But it does feel like it's in a much more solid position uh, for an early access launch, and I'm quite curious to see how it's going to improve uh, with some proper, like, player feedback testing and whatnot. Uh, but for now, at least, uh, I guess one last thank you to Becom Studios for sponsoring this video. It was very kind of you and it was a ton of fun. And, of course, if you guys like this video in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like. It helps more than you know. And if you want to see more rad new games every single day, then hit subscribe because I got tons to check out and show off. But with that, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.